sorry that I can't be with you today. Uh, as you might know, I've uh, had a second bout of COVID and although I'm okay, uh, I have not had a clear test as yet. I feel a little bit like the brown paper bag that goes to the doctors and tells the doctor that it's feeling unwell, has hot and cold sweats. The doctor examines the bag and tears a little bit off the corner of the bag and sends it off for test. Tells the bag to come back in a week's time. A week later, the bag returns to the doctor's surgery and says that he still feels ill. But the doctor tells the bag he knows why. He says, your father was a carrier. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. But seriously, friends, please give a thought today to the rest of the team who are having to fill, fill in for me in all kinds of ways, especially thanks to Becky for all the last minute rearranging that she's had to do for today. And I pray you have a great time together. Some years ago, I went on a course organised by the Salvation Army that looked at the common elements that helped churches to grow. Did they grow because they ran Alpha? Did they grow because they had dynamic cell groups? Did they grow because they had great community programs? Did churches decline because they had traditional worship styles? Did they decline uh, because they were not good pastorally, etc.? The interesting thing that came back from these interviews with over 2,000 English churches was that most of those things didn't seem to make a lot of difference. Two things stood out as being common to most growing churches and the same two things seem to be missing in declining churches. Vision and good leadership. Or to put them together, visionary leadership. So I just want to spend a bit of time talking to you today about vision. What it is and why it's important to us as churches. Some people just don't seem to have a lot of vision, do they? British scientist Lord Kelvin in 1895 said heavier than air flying machines are impossible. And you know the famous story about Decca Records who rejected the Beatles and said guitar groups were on the way out and the Beatles had no future in show business. Somebody got the sack for that, didn't they? Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But presumably the opposite of that verse is also true. Where there is vision, the people live, life is found, or the people are saved. What are your dreams? What are the things in life that you're passionate about? We all have dreams. Dreams about what we want to be, dreams of what we want to achieve, dreams about the future direction of our lives, dreams maybe about our careers and where we're going. We sometimes call this kind of dreaming having a vision. Well, we're all called to have a vision about our Christian lives and about our church lives. So in this sense, what does it mean to have vision? Do you remember that rather strange speech by Donald Rumsfeld, the US Secretary of Defence? He said this, as we know, there are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That's to say, we know there are some things we don't know. But we know there are also unknown unknowns. The ones we don't know we don't know. Are you confused? <laughs> I think that's how we leave a lot of churches feeling when we begin to talk about vision. But I don't think that vision in the spiritual sense is some kind of guessing game. It's not some kind of deep mystical insight that's only available to a few. Vision is simply the ability to see something of what God is doing. The ability to discern something of what he might have in store for us. More often than not, it's about sensing the direction that God might be leading us in. In Genesis 12, Abraham, you'll remember, was called by God to follow him, but God didn't tell him where to go. He just told him to set off in a certain direction until he told him to stop. There are other parts of the vision and lots of promises, but the vision began with Abraham simply following in the direction that God was leading him. This is a good way to understand vision. Seeing, understanding the direction that God is leading and then having the courage to follow. 
By the way, Abraham was 75 years old when he had this vision. It's not the reserve of the young. So vision, bit obviously, is about seeing or discerning. Seeing what God is doing and then making sure that we make our plans and our programmes in accord with the direction that we think God is moving. A good way to understand this is that we're to discern which way the wind of the Spirit is blowing and then putting our sail up in the wind so that we're driven in that direction, driven to the things God would have us be doing in the place he calls us to be doing them. So it means looking around, being aware of what's happening around us in the community of God's people. What is God doing among us? Where is God at work? Where are the green shoots of God's kingdom in your church, in your community? Where do we clearly see the spirit of God at work? Then move in that direction, invest in that area. In John 4, 35, Jesus says to his disciples and to us something very important. He says this, do not say four months more and then the harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Vision is about seeing as God sees. Seeing with the eyes of faith, not our human understanding. It reminds me of that story in Numbers 13 where the Israelites are on the border of Canaan and they send out 12 spies into the land to look and to report back. Now remember, this was the land that God had promised to give to them. They have God's promise. There's nothing vague here. And 10 of the spies come back and report that it's a wonderful land, but the people there are like giants, that they're so strong and so big, and that the Israelites, in comparison, are like grasshoppers, something to be brushed off or squashed as a nuisance. They saw the people and they were scared. They saw the size of the task and their faith left them. They came back and they gave that fear to the rest of the people. And the people began to grumble about uh, to God and moan about the leaders. They looked and they only saw with their human eyes and their human resources. But two of the spies, Joshua and Caleb, said that they should enter the land and claim it. That they would overcome the people because God had promised them the land. This was the direction in which God was moving. They saw the land with the eyes of faith. They saw what God saw. They saw where God was leading and had the faith to believe. So vision, friends, is also about faith. It's no good believing that God is leading us in a certain way. It's no good believing and seeing with God's eyes if we're not prepared to step out in faith. It's no good sensing where God is leading if we're not prepared to step out in faith, believe his promises to provide It's no good sensing where God is leading if you're not prepared to follow and pay the cost. So friends, do you, does your church have a vision of the direction God is calling you to go? If you do, do you have the faith to follow? Do you see with the eyes of faith or your human resources? If we have no vision, then we only have our human resources to fall back on. Then, like the spies reporting back, we'll say things like, we're too small, we don't have enough money, the economy's too bad, there are too few workers, we should wait for a better time, there are too many obstacles to overcome. The problem is we're like, they're like giants and we're like grasshoppers. Remember what our proverb said, where there is no vision, the people perish. I read this quote from a former missionary to India called Donald McGavran, who wrote that God was not pleased with fishing without catching, an empty banquet table, sowing without reaping, a fig tree that has no fruit, ripe harvests that are not gathered, proclamation without response. Friends, as local churches, We're in the business of bringing people to Jesus and making more and better disciples. But when we have we have to present when we have to present our annual returns, in all honesty, how are we doing? Jesus told his disciples, look at the harvest fields. They're right for harvest. Our job from God is to do whatever we can to bring in that harvest. This is the vision of every church. 
So how do we achieve what God has given us to do? By keeping it as our primary aim. Vision is about God ideas, not just simply good ideas. Many churches can come up with lots of ideas and mission statements, but they don't always have vision. We can sign up to a list of good things in principle, but we need more than just good ideas. We need God ideas. When people have a God idea, a vision, they give of themselves, they give of their money, their prayer, their time, their effort. They tolerate inconvenience for the bigger gain. They talk positively to others and have an infectious enthusiasm. They're not easily distracted into other things. They will give of their best because they're passionate about it. They have a vision from God. When a church has a vision, it's more likely to be successful. And what does a successful church look like? It has a passion for God's presence, a passion to reach the lost, a passion for integrity, a passion to be spirit-filled and spirit-led, a passion to serve others. Friends, I pray that God will help us to be a people of vision, that we will continue to be successful in the mission that God has called us to. God bless you as you spend the rest of this day together.